Hello, I'm Colby from FTC Team 14323, the Halfwit Hatchlings. This is the third video in a series describing holonomic drivetrains. In this video, we will be covering holonomic drivetrain calculation. In our first example, we will cover the simple method of adding inputs to allow control, and in our final example, we will show how to use trigonometry to read joystick inputs and calculate wheel input. When calculating an algorithm for a holonomic drivetrain, you need to consider how to control it. In our example, we will use the left stick Y values to control the robot to move forward and backward. Because the default reading for the Y value is negative when pushing the stick forward, we will take the negative value to make it positive. We will use the left stick X value to make the robot slide right and left, and we will use the right stick X value to cause the robot to turn right or left. In our example, we have all the motors rotating in the same direction. This is the default rotation for Tetrix motors. If you use different motors or want to run some in reverse direction, you will have to switch the appropriate positive and negative values to compensate. Our examples will show the direction that the top of the wheel is rotating. For a robot to move forward, motor M0 will need to rotate in the negative direction and motor M1 will need to rotate in the positive direction. The sideways forces will cancel each other and the robot will move in the forward direction. Similarly, motor M2 will need to rotate in the positive direction and motor M3 will rotate in the negative direction. Moving backwards means that the motors should spin the opposite of what we just described. For the robot to slide to the right, using a positive X value on the left stick, M0 will need to spin in the negative direction, M1 will need to spin in the negative direction, M2 will need to spin in the positive direction, and M3 will need to spin in the positive direction. For the robot to slide left, it will be the opposite of what we just described. For turning, we use the right stick x positive value to make the robot turn right by turning all motors in the negative direction, and we will turn left by turning all the motors in the positive direction. To summarize, for moving forward we have... For moving right, we have... And for turning right, we have... In the simple form of control, we can just add the values together for each motor and it will result in the proper direction for the motor. However, we can run a program in circumstances where the values added together can be greater than positive one or less than negative one. The motors are expecting a power value between positive one and negative one. To account for this, we check if the absolute value of the highest motor speed is greater than one, and if it is, we scale all motor values down by dividing each motor power by that number. An interesting effect with this configuration is that the robot will move 41% faster in the primary directions. This is due to the force of vectors forming a right triangle with the resulting speed and distance being 1.41 times as fast and as far as the wheels turn. In our previous video, we erroneously mentioned that mechanum drivetrain has the same speed benefit in the primary directions. Although the mechanum wheels can be controlled with programming similar to the X pattern omni wheels, their force vectors do not behave in the same way as the X pattern omni wheels. For our final example, we will use trigonometry to calculate joystick direction and power. Then we will show how that relates to wheel direction and power. When using trigonometric functions, we must use radians instead of degrees. So first we must understand how they relate. As you know, there are 360 degrees in a full circle. There are also two pi radians in a full circle. That means that there are pi radians in a half circle, one half pi radians in a quarter circle, and one quarter pi radians in an eighth of a circle. This will be important to remember when we look at our final calculation. You can use arctangent to calculate the angle in radians when given the x and y values of a right triangle. Please be aware that this only works correctly for positive x and y values. Fortunately, there is a built-in function called arctan2 that works in any quadrant of the circle. We can use this function to take the left stick x value and the left stick y value to calculate the heading of the joystick in radians. We can then use the same x and y values in the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the total power in that direction. Now we have both the input heading and power. To explain how to apply power to the wheels, we'll start off with a plus pattern omni wheel configuration. Then we'll show how the equations change for the x pattern omni wheel configuration in mechanism drive. Let's focus on one wheel at a time and assume we are applying a full power of 1. If our robot is to move in the forward direction, which is a heading of 0 radians, then motor M0 will be at 0 power. To move to the right, which is a heading of 1 half pi radians, M0 will be at negative 1 power. To move backwards, which is a heading of pi radians, 
M0 would again be at 0 power, and finally, to move to the left, which is a heading of 3 halves pi radians, motor 0 will be at plus 1 power. We can continue mapping out each wheel in this manner and graphing its power at each increment. You may notice some familiar patterns forming. You can see that the wheel movements behave according to the sine and cosine function, or the negative of those functions. Each wheel's speed can then be calculated by multiplying the heading power times its function. It's great for the plus pattern, but you may ask, what about the x pattern? The good news is that you can use the same functions. However, the front of your robot would be in the upper right hand corner at the heading of 1 quarter pi. So all you need to do is add 1 quarter pi to your angle in each equation and you're good to go. To account for turning, we can just subtract the right stick x value at the end. However, the robot will likely turn too quickly, so it is a good idea to scale down the turn value before subtracting it. Again, since the motors are expecting the power value between positive 1 and negative 1, we check if the absolute value of the highest motor speed is greater than 1, and if it is, we scale all motors down by dividing each motor's power by that number. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to get notified of future videos, hit the bell down below. In the next video, we'll be covering programming for FTC and show how to add field-oriented control. Thank you for watching.